back to Lighthouse Baptist Church tonight. Let's all stand as we stand. If you grab your songbook, turn to hymn number 94. We'll sing little as much when God is in it, hymn number 94. We'll sing all four stanzas, hymn number 94. In the harvest field now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark the voice of God is calling to the harvest calling you. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it and he'll not sacred place of prayer. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. When the conflict here is ended and the race on earth is run, he will say if we are faithful, welcome home. number 313. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Hymn number 313. We'll sing it out tonight. Both stanzas. Hymn number 313. In a little town of Bethlehem so many years ago, they told him there was no room in the inn. But they had no way of knowing who they had turned away. The Lamb of Take away their sins. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. He's more than just a story, He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. So many people still today don't know who Jesus is. They've never felt His peace within their souls. But I want my life to show them how His love can set them free. He's the only one who can cleanse and make me whole. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. He's more than just a story. He is the King of glory. I'm glad beginning and the end. He's a counselor, deliverer to me. He's the everlasting Father. He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. He's more than just a story. He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and uh, ask the Lord to meet with us tonight. I'll go ahead and pray for us to start. Father, we uh, thank you, God, for allowing us to be back in church tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the good Sunday school and church service this morning. And, and now, Father, afresh, we ask you, dear God, to speak to us, Lord, tonight. Father, I pray that uh, we would leave here, Lord, more equipped and better to uh, glorify you and live for you. And we pray this and ask your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. If you love Jesus, say amen. 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 Oh, man, if you love Jesus, say amen. amen. Oh, that's
that's better. I believe you. I believed you the first time. But uh, listen, real quickly, uh, we want to uh, be back in church on Wednesday night, all right? You say, man, we just got to church now. That's right. Well, you're here. Good. Let's do it again, all right? And uh, Wednesday night, 730, we'll be in our regular midweek service. I want to encourage you about that. And then uh, don't forget, end of the month, June 30th, all day on the 30th, evangelist Chris Dallas will be with us, preaching morning service, evening service, and then Monday night, July 1st as well. He'll be preaching with us and uh, for us and uh, on Monday night, July 1st, 7 o'clock, all right? That's a 7 o'clock uh, service on July 1st, and, uh, and so want to make sure that you're here for that, uh, those both nights there, okay? Uh, I want to just jump into uh, some prayer requests tonight and just have a quick time. Uh, I say quick. I, I we don't want to rush it, but we want to have a time of prayer. And, uh, and so if I can just give you a few things here. And uh, Brother Wayne, if you'll write these down, okay? And, uh, and for sake of time, I'll not, uh, you know, belabor, uh, belabor all of the requests with the long story of everything I know about every detail of it. I'll just kind of lay it out there, all right? And I'm trying to do better. All right, trying to do better. And uh, so uh, first, obviously, we're praying. The reason we want to pray is we want God's power. We need God's power here and uh, revival. We're asking for personal revival, and we're asking for a collective revival. And, and so I want you to uh, a national revival, elections coming up, all that's going on in our nation. So we will be praying for revival. We want to pray for souls saved and folks to be baptized. We've been praying continuously about some young people in our Sunday school and bus route that need to be baptized, want to be baptized, but the parents are uh, holding back on that, of, of giving permission for them to. And so we want to pray about that. The, the kids sometimes uh, are in a better state spiritually right now. And uh, so pray that for those baptisms and others, praying for building space, all right? We're going to try to make some adjustments in our Sunday school, which is be good, but it's really just kind of shuffling adjustments. We need, to, we need some expansion, and you pray about that. We're working uh, toward that with a plan, and so keep praying about it if you would. Then I want you to continue to pray for Miss Amy Sanger, all right? I told him this morning that Miss Amy is in the hospital uh, right now. She finally got a room. She's in a room at the hospital there at uh, Baltimore Washington Medical Center and uh, she's in room 891 891 and uh, she said if you wanted to visit she's up for visits I mean she may not be up for visits but she enjoys people and uh, and so if you'd like to uh, see Miss Amy uh, you could Israel be there and uh, but you need to pray for us been real sick all right and if you do visit don't stay a long time okay and uh, be mindful about it she might keep you there a long time but you know just tell her stop talking Amy I gotta leave and uh, but uh, point is you know she's very sick right now and uh, but you know sometimes when people show up and uh, you know, act like they care. It means a lot to people too, you know. And so uh, if you would pray for Amy, pray for Israel. I'm so glad the girls are here. You pray for them and uh, as well. They're pushing through and, and supporting mom and dad in this thing as well. And you want to lift them up in prayer. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Cron. Okay, of course, Miss Kamiko went home to be with the Lord. I tried to get that word out to everybody, made the announcement this morning. Uh, when we have more details about the service, we'll get it out there. We don't know right now. He still has to meet with the uh, funeral home and, and all of that. And so we've not made any uh, uh, definite plans yet. Most 99% would be here at the church. Okay, we're pretty confident about that, but not sure when. So we'll get, let you know, right? But pray for Brother Chuck. Pray for his son, Kenny, and his daughter, Stephanie, if you'll pray for them, all right? Pray for Brother Kingsland. Brother Kingsland's recovering from this knee procedure, but he is very sick. He's been vomiting. Uh, for a, a good while now, very nauseous, uh, uh, nauseous. And so pray for Brother Kings, and if you would. And then uh, I got an update on the Arnie twins, uh, Pastor and Mrs. Arnie's uh, babies. Uh, they were doing really good, but there's been a little bit of a setback, I, you might say. And uh, Ezra was have to be was had to be moved back to University Hospital there in the city, and uh, he has a. Uh, something going on where he can't take in the nourishment that he needs. They're probably going to have to do a procedure, but they're going to have to put a pick line directly into his heart first to try to to try to feed uh, his heart and uh, and and get that so they can then do a procedure uh, so that he he can. And then Jeremiah just started vomiting, 
and, uh, and they're thinking because they're twins, they're surmising that Jeremiah might have the same thing, and they're working now to try to get Jeremiah moved to university. And you think about that. They have two kids at home, and then they, have, they had two twins down in Annapolis. Now they have one twin in Annapolis and one twin in Baltimore City, okay? So, I, I mean, I just want to see Jeremiah get up there with his brother, right, you know? So pray for the Arnies, if you would. And uh, they've been doing good, but there's just been a little snag here, okay? And so pray for them, Ezra and Jeremiah. Uh, I want you to continue to pray for Pastor Han. And uh, he had that stent put in. He was able to go to church today. And, uh, but it takes a little while to get over that. And I've talked to Brother Cox and uh, uh, folks with the uh, heart thing. And, and uh, so you pray for Pastor Han about that. That's, uh, uh, I don't know, there's just something about that that gets to me. And, uh, and so you pray for Brother Han on that. Uh, I want you to pray for Ellie Green. I got a text today. Of course, the Greens heard about uh, uh, Chuck and, you know, about Miss Kamiko. And uh, they wanted to send up sympathies. But also, uh, Ellie is going to uh, the Cincinnati Children's Hospital this week uh, for a procedure to get ready for another major surgery. And so if you'll pray for Ellie uh, this week, and you think about, we're praying for these Ellie twins, but you think about thousands of people that prayed for our little Ellie all those years that they were here. And so I want you to continue to pray for Ellie. And, uh, and then uh, pray for Darlene. Darlene's going to be going in for surgery soon. I don't have the exact date, but she's going in soon to have a mass removed uh, from her colon. And uh, it's a major kind of a procedure that's got to be done. So I want you to pray uh, for Darlene about that, okay? And uh, so if we can just uh, come together and uh, pray over these uh, things that are going on here. And uh, you know what? Pray for Jim right here. And if you'll pray for Jim, Jim is going in tomorrow uh, to start chemo treatments and, uh, for cancer. And I want you to pray for him. And uh, he said, oh, I'm fine. I'll be all right. It's no problem. And, uh, but you pray for him, okay? And, uh, but listen, let's pray for one another. That's what we do. The, as many as can. If you can, let's come. Brother Burwagger, why don't you come represent us in prayer? As many as you can, come. Gather around the altar. Let's just take a few moments here and agree together. Remember, agreeing together in prayer is work. You've got to stay focused. We're talking to God. And let's intercede and ask the Lord to do something for us here, all right? Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, just a, another time that we can come before your throne of grace. Lord, we're reminded that we're in constant need of you. And, Lord, I just I do pray tonight, Lord, that you would hear the cry of our hearts. And, Lord, we there's no other place to go. There's no answer anywhere else. Lord, there's no hope anywhere else. But we thank you for the hope you've given us. That's the joy of our strength. Amen. And I pray, God, that tonight you would just hear the needs that, that are present. Lord, let us rejoice in that you have heard our prayer. Let us rejoice that you will answer. And I, I pray, God, tonight that you would be with them. Lord, just we, we need your power upon us personally. We need your power upon us as a nation. Lord, we need, we do need revival. And I pray, God, that you would, uh, Lord, hear that cry. Sometimes the, we don't even know what to ask, but you know. And Lord, just to have that desire that, um, Lord, if we ask anything in your name, Lord, do you, you answer? Lord, it's something that's pleasing to you, and I pray that you would hear that. Lord, give revival for us personally and our families. Uh, Lord, our country, our nation. Uh, Lord, even in our county here locally in our state. And I pray, God, that you would help us to make a difference. And, Lord, we do pray for salvation and baptisms. We, we thank you for the decisions that have been made over the last couple months. And, Lord, the desire for children to be baptized. And, Lord, that you would just let that... Um, Lord, just settle in the hearts of their parents and that they would want to be pleased in obeying you. Lord, I know the children want to be pleased in obeying you. Their parents would support that and you would work in their hearts. And Lord, we do pray tonight. Pray, thank you for Brother Chuck. We pray just pray for him. We pray for um, his son, Kenny, and his, his daughter, Stephanie. And Lord, I just ask that you would uh, just give him great, uh, a great testimony, just a time of peace through this. Lord, um, that it can again be just be used for your honor and glory and I, I thank you for him and just for his faithfulness lord i, I think of uh, the, the request given this morning for vicky and the loss of her husband and lord um there's all that has to be taken care of i thank you for uh lord, those that have friends that would ask help and i pray god that you would just work in her heart i, 
I pray, um, or our pastor said, we need building space. And we thank you for having that challenge to be faced with. But we ask that you would just answer that prayer in a special way. And I thank Miss Amy Sanger tonight. Thank you for giving her a room. And I pray, Lord, that you would just, uh, Lord, take the pain from her, give her comfort. And I pray that these treatments would, Lord, just take effect. Uh, like, and uh, thank you for the, just the inventions you've given us given men knowledge and the ability to understand. But I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, cure her of this sickness and this cancer, Lord, in, in just a great and mighty way. And, Lord, we th I thank tonight for Brother Kingsland. I thank you for bringing through the surgery well. And I pray for quick recovery. Um, Lord, just um, help him to be able to settle down with his pain and, and just his systems and medication to him just seem to confuse a lot of things. But I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help him recover quickly and get back to his uh, system just being settled and, and feeling well. Lord, we thank you for, again, the, just the progress with the r &E twins, for Ezra and Jeremiah. And we ask, Lord, now that um, uh, maybe a small setback for them, but, Lord, I pray that you would just continue to bring them through, strengthen them, Lord, in, in a special way. Lord, I, um, I just think of all the memorials you've given us that we can look back on and just see your hand move in, in a great and mighty way. And I, I pray that that's the case here we thank you for uh, taking care of pastor Hahn and lord just again just your timing is so good and, and just watching over each one i uh, pray that you would um, just continue to heal him strengthen him and then we're thinking of little ellie tonight lord just a memorial here as well be with her through this procedure we're just another step along the way of lord we can't never let our trust down our faith in you and i, I pray you would just um, prepare her for this surgery and it would come through Lord, just with your hand upon her. And we pray the same for Miss Darlene as you strengthen her. Lord, just uh, prepare her for the surgery. And Lord, just the, the many little intricacies that we don't know about. I, and you do. You're in the details. Amen. And I pray, God, that you would just um, bring her through that. Help uh, Brother Warren. Just give him peace. Give him um, just contentment through that. And then, Lord, we pray for, for Jim here for going in for the chemo treatments. Lord, um, we're all right if we have you. And I pray, God, he could just, knowing that, uh, Lord, there would be peace in his heart. And I think, Brother uh, Chris, tonight, just pray you would help him recover quickly from his rotator cuff surgery. And, Lord, that with the pain and uh, just getting rest. And, and, God, most of all, it's just we need to spend more time with you. Amen. Lord, I ask that you would uh, draw us closer. Lord, put aside the weights of this world, the distractions, um, the things that would seek to take our eyes upon you off of you, but I pray that our eyes would be upon you, Lord, that we'd be like the apple of your eye, and Lord, in a special way. Lord, we, we love you, and we thank you so much for what you've done, and Lord, we, we're looking forward to what you're going to do for us, and we pray you just continue to watch over our pastor, Lord, uh, help him hedge about him, about his family, and Lord, you use, um, use him in a great and mighty way, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Well, I hope you'll take those prayer requests home and be praying over them and, and, uh, and making much of prayer. Let's pray, pray, pray. And uh, just, you know, you can pray while you're walking. You can pray while you're driving. You can pray while you're sitting. You can pray, uh, well, just you can pray all the time. And that's what we need to do, okay? And uh, get your songbooks out. Brother Kyle, you come lead us. Let's stand together, if you will. Amen. As we stand, hymn number 19. M number 19 will sing like a river glorious. M number 19 will sing all three stanzas. M number 19, like a river glorious. Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. Over all victorious in His pride. Hey. 
have Brother Keaston come and pray and ask the Lord to receive it from us tonight. When he closes, you can be seated as these ushers pass the offering plates. Brother Keaston, please. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to give. Ask you, Lord, that you will bless this offering for, for it to further the gospel both here and there. And bless all that goes on in your name. Amen. Amen. Please take your Bibles this evening and turn to the book of 2 Timothy. We'll be reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4 this evening. 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we'll be reading through into, um, I'm sorry, chapter 3 is where we'll be starting, but we'll be reading through into chapter 4. We'll be, re we'll be starting out in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 10. And if everyone could please stand for the reading of the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. And the Bible says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast heard or thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished unto all good works. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for blessing us this morning with everyone you brought out. And, uh, Lord, it was just uh, good to see the buses roll in with the riders. And, uh, Lord, we ask that you continue to use Lighthouse, continue to use each and every one of us to be an influence for you to this lost and dying world. And, Lord, please use our preacher tonight, fill him with power, and use him to touch our hearts through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As you find your seats, if you turn in your songbook, hymn number 389, we'll sing Tell It to Jesus, hymn number 389. We'll sing the first, second, and last stanzas, Tell It to Jesus, hymn number 389. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. 
to Jesus Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus He is a friend that's well known You know other, such a friend or brother Tell it to Jesus alone Do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus Have you sins that two men's eyes are hidden Tell it to Jesus alone Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus He is a friend that's well That's the truth. Amen. I like that. Take your Bible. Go to uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And uh, we'll look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy and uh, chapter 4. It's strange how the Lord brought this message uh, about to me. I'm considering last week. We had a great graduation service last Sunday night. And uh, for uh, Lily and Lyris who graduated high school and they marched and got their diplomas. And, and I preached a message last Sunday night on uh, making your life count for Jesus. They, they sang that song. They sang a special and, and uh, about wanting their lives to count for Jesus. And we looked at the Bible and saw that there's some principles that we need to apply that make our life count for Jesus. But I also, in uh, thinking about graduation and thinking about uh, graduation-type themes... Uh, kind of uh, was looking at, you know, things that would uh, bring good success, all right? The word success is found over there in Joshua in chapter 1. And uh, we, if you'll take the, the law of the Lord and meditate on it uh, day and night, uh, you'll have good success. Uh, you know, be strong, courageous, all of that that's told Joshua. And I, I, and I was leaning in uh, those thoughts and leaning on some of the truths about uh, the Word of God and, and, and having a successful uh, life, a blessed life, and, and was thinking those things. But then I also was studying for our Sunday school lesson. And uh, studying our Sunday school lesson for this week, we talked this morning about uh, re receiving uh, reproof receiving reproof, and, and it just kind of dovetailed with my study in uh, building good success and having a successful life. It was kind of coming together there, and uh, when I first uh, got into church, and of course, you know, my testimony, I strayed from the Lord as a teenager for a little while, and, and uh, the Lord had to uh, 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 chasten me in a great way and got me back uh, into the house of God, and, and, uh, and I got in the house of God, and then the Lord spoke to me, and I repented and, and got, you know, thoroughly right, if you would, however the old timers would want to say it, with the Lord. Um, the first Bible study that uh, I sat in on Wednesday nights, the pastor was going through the book of Proverbs. He was going through Proverbs. He was going through it uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and, and uh, teaching through the Proverbs. And, and uh, it, it was probably one of the uh, best Bible studies for me as a young man, just uh, uh, really, uh, I'd been out of high school maybe a year, maybe two years, and, uh, and just uh, to be getting right with God and then being taught. Uh, I had been uh, somewhat foolish, uh, but I was still very simple uh, in the fact of the Christian life. You know, I was kind of simple. And, and Proverbs is written 
to give wisdom to the simple. And uh, someone who doesn't have a lot of marks, you know, on the page yet. And, uh, and I had some marks, certainly. So I, had, I had messed my paper up, if you would. But the Lord was allowing me to write some new things on it, if you would. And, and going through <clears throat> the book of Proverbs, uh, I was taught over and over about this thing of reproof and the success uh, that it brings. And, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. It's just weird how it all kind of dovetailed together with the Sunday school lesson uh, and my study uh, for last week. Had it not been for that special, I would have probably preached this last Sunday. And, uh, but that special uh, uh, just arrested my attention about teaching on uh, or preaching last Sunday night on uh, making your life count for Jesus, the life that counts for Jesus. And, uh, but then it was I thinking about the Sunday school lesson and just kind of, oh, wow, this is like a double, man. I'm, 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 I'm hitting, you know, twice uh, in one Sunday here. And, uh, and so I want to talk to you out of this uh, passage here in 2 Timothy. I'll use it a little bit as a, uh, a springboard. And I want to talk to you about corrected and blessed, being corrected and blessed, all right? And, and it has to do with responding to rebuke, uh, re- reproof or reproving and rebuke, all right? Has anybody ever been rebuked by someone, all right? Yeah, yeah. If you, you, any old timers certainly have been rebuked by your parents before, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you ever played on a good team, if you ever played on a good team, you had a coach that rebuked you because good coaches rebuke. All right, that's what they do, you know, and uh, they, they, they get on you and, they, and they're, they're correcting you, right? They're correcting you. They're trying to make you a better ball player, trying to make you a better team member, trying to make you a better whatever. If you had a good teacher, if you had a good teacher, that teacher reproved you, that, that teacher uh, rebuked you at times, all right? And, uh, and here, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, uh, Paul, he's talking to Timothy, and uh, in verse 14 he says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus." All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And, you know, I've given you this before. There it is, doctrine. Doctrine is what right is, right? Doctrine is what right is. Reproof is what right ain't, okay? What ain't right, okay? That's what reproof is. Reproof is that's not right, okay? Correction is how to get it right, okay? It ain't right but you can make it right. And then instruction in righteousness is how to keep it right, okay? And so doctrine, that's, hey, that's the goal. That's, that's what right is. Reproof, that's not right. That, you're not doing right. Correction is start doing this. Come back this way and start doing this. And instruction is how to stay doing it, how to keep doing it. And, and from what happened to me in my early Christian life uh, as a young adult is... Hey, I got reproved, all right? Uh, I got off track. I got reproved, and then, hey, I got reproved, and 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 reproved, and reproved, and reproved. And And I've been getting reproved ever since. This is why I go to conferences. This is why I go to preaching. This is why I listen to preaching Uh, every week of the world. I listen, I don't know, probably uh, at least, at least five sermons. Every week I listen to different preaching. I'm listening to a lot of old time preaching right now from the 60s, the 60s and 70s. I found uh, some sermons of some old timers and they've, uh, some people have uh, revitalized their audio uh, messages. And I've been listening to a lot of them. And I'm going to tell you something. I've been getting rebuked and rebuked and rebuked by these old timers listening to them. Uh, but it, it is, that, that's, that's where it is. And then in chapter 4, okay, so it leans, and I had Brother Dempsey read both because they go together. The emphasis in verse 2, uh, where it says preach the word, okay, well, that comes back from verse 16, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, you see. And, and he says, I charge thee, in verse 4, he goes, I charge thee therefore, Hey, because you've known the Scriptures, uh, the, the Holy Scriptures, you've known them as a child. You've been taught these things. You've learned these things. 
Okay? You know that. And because of that, and because Scripture is given and it's profitable, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing uh, and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right? Now listen to me. He's telling them, hey, here's what you need to do, Timothy. You're, you're the preacher there. You need to reprove, rebuke, exhort, and you need to do it with all long suffering. Don't get tired of it. Don't get weary of it. I told Miss Arcan the other day, I said, so I get weary of it. I get tired of saying the same thing over and over again. I get tired of, you know, pushing. I get tired of, I get tired of this. I get tired. But listen, that's what, that's what living the Christian life is. That's what being a Christian is. You got to keep putting one foot in front of the other to keep going. You get, I get tired of walking, all right? I get tired of driving. I get tired. Well, look, if you're going to get somewhere, you're going to have to drive. If you're going to get somewhere, you're going to have to walk. If you're going to do anything, you're going to... Hey, we, we have an enemy in the world that's fighting against us, you see. And, and so we need to deal with... We need to understand that. And, and he says, with long-suffering uh, and doctrine. You, know, you, you Make sure you're doing it with... You know, with what right is there. Make sure you're doing what the right thing is. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Okay? So the time's going to come when people won't, they, 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 they won't endure sound doctrine. They're not going to take it, man. They're, they're going to turn away. They're going to do it. So you need to do it. Hey, you need to do it. And, and then he gives us the antidote for that in verse 5. We stopped reading, but in verse 5 he says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I'm, and, and he's telling them, hey, you know what? You're going to have to keep winning people to Christ because, you know, some of the people that you won to Christ, they're going to stop listening to what you're saying. Right. And they're going to go away from the faith, and you're going to have to get some new people you have to get some new people. You've got to have to continue. That's why we've got to keep soul winning. That's why we can keep running the buses. That's why we've got to keep, hey, going after folks and, and preaching the gospel and trying to do it. you just got to, you just got to keep doing it all, all of the above. you just got to keep trying to do as much of it as you can and not quit, not get weary, uh, uh, suffer. Long, long suffering means suffering long. You're just going to have to suffer through it. And, and, uh, and some days there's going to be, as we said this morning uh, in our message with Job, there's going to be some good days and there's, going to, and there's going to be some gloomy days. Amen? There's going to be some glad days and there's going to be some sad days. Uh, th th there's going to be some uh, good times and, th and there's going to be some bad times. It, it, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. But you keep moving forward. Now, the word reprove, all right, the word reprove here means to blame, uh, if you would, uh, blame uh, expressed, if you would, to the face. Uh, it's censure for a fault or uh, uh, reprehension, if you would. It, it, it is said in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, those best can bear reproof who merit praise. Proverbs 12, 1, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Uh, he's saying that uh, the dictionary gives us the definition of uh, reproof or reprove is, is blame expressed to the face. You ever had anybody tell you to the face? Oh, my soul. Man, I did all the time growing up. And I did all the time uh, 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 as a young preacher. And, and, and it, you know, well, you know my father-in-law. Anyhow, uh, blame, listen, uh, reproof is blame cast. It's censure directed to a person. Now, rebuke is to, if you would, tax with fault. It's to chide. Uh, it's to censure severely, to admonish or charge sharply. Uh, and and it, it even sounds that way, doesn't it? Reproving sounds less harsh than rebuking, doesn't it? Just the way, just the, way the words sound. A rebuke sounds rougher than a reproof. It just does. Now, it is commonly thought, it's commonly thought that the difference between reprove and rebuke here is uh, to reprove is to correct someone to start doing what they should do. And to rebuke someone is to correct, uh, is to correct someone to stop doing what they shouldn't be doing. Okay? That's kind of how it's kind of understood. And, and the reprove uh, is, is, is negative, but it is negative in a positive way. Do the thing that will bring you blessing and prosperity. 
And rebuking is, hey, stop the thing that's going to bring you poverty and shame. Okay? And, and, and so the rebuking comes off a little harsher, but both of them are commanded uh, by God to the preacher, and I believe to the family and to the uh, body of Christ, are supposed, supposed to be part of our lives, all right? The purpose of reproof and rebuke is, is first of all, it's, it's for correction. It's to guide us back to the right path. That's why the Scripture says it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The, the reason for the reproof or the rebuke is to correct us, to guide us back. How many of you want to go the wrong direction? No, you want someone to tell you what the right direction is. I don't want my GPS giving me wrong directions, do you? No, has anybody ever had one do that to you before, right? It's kind of, it gets, it, you know, maybe it doesn't know there's a new road here, there's a new this, there's a new that. We moved in our house and it was a new house, it was a new road, it was a new, and nobody could find it for the first year or two in our house. Literally, UPS trucks were going to New Jersey. Trying to find, you know, uh, for us, and and nobody could nobody could find us. You know, it was it was it was it was ridiculous. And finally, you know, it's gotten I guess on the map a little bit or something, and they start to get you there. But it is for the purpose for reproof and rebuke is for correction to guide us back to the right path. Proverbs chapter three verses eleven and twelve says, "My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth." Hey, listen, the people that are getting corrected are the people that God loves, right? right? And, uh, and so the reproof, right, it's for correction. It's for character. It's to develop a Christ-like character in us. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11, the Bible says, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Listen, the purpose for reproof and, and rebuking is to develop one's character, to bring us in, to be more like Christ. We need someone to reprove us. We need to hear reproof so that we can, hey, adjust ourselves and mold ourselves so that we can be more Christ-like, so that we can be more usable, so that we can be more profitable. And, and listen, and it's never joyous. Listen, the Hebrews 12 passage, the context there, it is a comparison about God correcting, chastening us as his children, but he compares it to parents. And listen to me, it is, not, uh, it is not like a joy to discipline your children. Uh, in the moment, it's grievous to do it. But can I say, if you'll do it when they're young and get them trained and disciplined early, let me tell you something, friend, later you'll have the peaceable fruits of righteousness. You'll have well-behaved, well-mannered children. And you'll have peace. I'm not saying you won't ever have any problems, you won't have any conflict. Obviously, uh, children grow up, they have a mind and a spirit and, and, and they're accountable to the Lord themselves and they have to be obedient and they have to be submissive and, and all of that. But the concept is, hey, no chastisement, no correction, no reproof or rebuke is joyous in the moment. But friend, if you'll be exercised thereby, it will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Hey, it'll pay dividends down the road. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that I was rebuked and, 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 and reproved as, as a young uh, preacher uh, by the pastor that I had, by the ministry leaders that I had. I was telling stories in Sunday school this morning about the ministry leaders uh, that I had and, and uh, the, 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 the rebukings that we got. Hey, listen, so the purpose is for what? Correction. It's for character, to develop a Christ-like character in us. It, it is, listen, the, the purpose of reproof and rebuking is, is, is to bring conviction, to convict us of sin and to lead us to repentance. That, that's what the verse is. Hey, for instruction in righteousness. Look, he preaches the word so that we can go and go, oh, wait a second, man, I'm not living up to that. I'm not doing that. Hey, ooh, that, that hurts, man. I don't pray like I should. I don't read my Bible like I should. I don't witness like I should. I don't uh, discipline my children like I should. I don't obey my parents like I should. Oh, man, and, and it brings conviction. That conviction, uh, it, that conviction makes us feel bad. 
Okay? Now, now, the goal is not to make you feel bad and make you feel guilty. That's not, if that's the spirit behind it, that's not good. But Paul said, if I bring you to sorrow after a godly sort, I'm not repenting about that. I'm not disappointed in that. I want to bring you to a repentive place. I want you to get right about that. Oh, I, yeah, I hurt your feelings. Okay, well, too bad, too sad. Man. I mean, he didn't want to hurt their feelings. But he wanted to correct them. He wanted them to be convicted of the wrongdoing so that they could get doing right. You see, that's the purpose. Now, the, the proper response, okay, and that was our Sunday school lesson this morning. The proper response to reproof and rebuke, friend, is humility. Yeah. It's humility. That's, that's the proper response. The proper response is humility. Now, it's interesting in our Sunday school lesson this morning, if any of you got the lesson. Of course, if you were in my Sunday school class, you didn't get much of the lesson. Uh, but if you, the, 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 the character that we had was the character of Apollos uh, there in Acts chapter 18. And it's very interesting when we're introduced to Apollos, we're introduced to his, uh, to his credentials. We're introduced to who he was, man. This is a man from Alexandria. I mean, this is a man, you know, from Harvard or Yale or, or one of the Ivy League schools, if you would. Uh, he was a great philosopher, great uh, uh, things. He knew the Bible well. I mean, he was, uh, he, he was uh, uh, strong in the Scriptures, it says. I mean, it tells me he was a theologian, if you would. And, and he was an eloquent man. I mean, he was a speaker. I mean, he, he could, hey, he could turn the room. He could probably debate and, 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 and win. Uh, I mean, he was, he was, he knew that Old Testament. And he knew, but all he knew about, the limit of his knowledge was up to John, John the Baptist, that John was preparing the way. He was preparing the way for the Messiah. But then these two little, if you would, and, and I was kind of maybe disrespectful toward him, but I said these two little rednecks who uh, uh, made tents for a living, Aquila and Priscilla. Now listen to me. I don't know that they're rednecks, but I know this. They weren't eloquent people from Alexandria. They hadn't graduated no Ivy League school. Uh, they didn't speak. The, they didn't know the letters. Uh, they, they, they weren't uh, exercised, if you would, in, in higher education. Uh, these were craftsmen. And, and listen, and, and friend, let me tell you something. It don't matter if you're a doctor or a lawyer. If you're, hey, if your commodes are backed up, you know what you need? You need a plumber. And you go, man, well, you're a lot of money. You cost a lot. Well, how much do you charge? Well, I charge about $150 an hour. You know, I'm a doctor. Well, I charge about $150 too because I'm a doctor of pipes. And friend, if I walk out of here, you're stuck. And that's the truth. I've known some tradesmen that are that way. They said, you know, these people sometimes, you know, they don't know how to do nothing. They've got to call me, but they expect to give me pennies, but they want to charge us. You understand what I'm saying? Look, the trades, when you learn a trade, friend, I mean, that's a good thing to do. We ought to emphasize that more and, uh, and whatnot. I mean, I'm not against college. I'm for college. I'm not against it at all. I'm just saying, I'm, all, I'm, I'm against learning. I mean, not against, I'm for. <laughs> yeah, I'm against it. Let's close the Bible. I done ruined it. I done ruined it. I meant the opposite of that, all right? I meant the opposite. I'm for learning. I'm for learning. That's what I mean. I'm for learning. And, uh, but uh, this Apollos, he's up there waxing eloquent, man, preaching, uh, if you would, the message that John the Baptist was bringing. And he's talking about a Messiah who's coming. And Aquila and Priscilla are sitting there going, he already came. He already came. He already died. He, he was already buried, already rose. Spirit of God's already come upon us. And, and they pulled Apollos aside and they taught him, hey, more perfectly. And Apollos received, he, he received the correction that this Aquila and Priscilla gave him. And then he went on to do even greater things. And we find out about him over there in 1 Corinthians, hey, in chapter 3, that, hey, Apollos is on the level of Paul and, and Peter. He was, so, he was so strong in the Scriptures. He was, so strong. he was like the Apostle Paul. Paul knew uh, the Word of God before he got saved. I mean, he knew it. Remember, he was zealous persecuting the church. Man, when Jesus saved him, hey, all them Old Testament Scriptures opened up and were illuminated to Paul. And so Paul was mighty in the Scriptures, but so was Apollos mighty in the Scriptures. But you know what? Apollos had to, he had to accept the reproof. He had to accept the, he had to accept the correction. Hey, even though he probably knew things uh, that Aquila and Priscilla had no idea about. But you know what? They knew something he didn't know, right? And we need to understand that. And so, so humility here really spoke to me when I was thinking about uh, Apollos, that, hey, the proper response is humility. It's to acknowledge and accept the reproof humbly. 
Uh, Proverbs 12, 1, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. When we hate reproof, when we hate being corrected, when we hate uh, uh, our shortcomings being pointed out, and, and, and when we hate that, that makes us a brutish man. That, that, that's a man who uh, is, is, is ignorant. A man who is bossy, pushy, uh, arrogant, and, 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 you know, doesn't have time for anybody, and, and uh, just a rude, nasty, uh, ungodly, if you would. And friend, listen, that's not the way to, the proper response to reproof or rebuke is to humbly acknowledge and accept it. Just accept it. Say, yep, it's true, and I got to do something about that. I need to do so. I need to work on that. And, and accept it. Hey, not only is, it, is the proper response humility, but the proper response is to heed it. Listen and apply the correction to your life. Listen and apply it. Uh, Proverbs 15, 31 and 32 says, The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Huh? I mean, what he's saying is, is, hey, the right response to reproof. Remember, God tells uh, Timothy through Paul, hey, preach the word, reprove and rebuke. He tells us that the word of God is profitable for what? For, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Friend, listen to me. There's a crowd, friend, they don't like to be told anything. Police says, hey, can I have your uh, driver's license, please? No. I want to be on my way, please. You know, got these, uh, uh, these, these, this sovereign citizen uh, thing. And look, and I'm for knowing your rights, and, and, and there is a Fourth Amendment right. They don't have any right to, uh, you know, search your car, you know, without calls and coming in your house. I, look, I'm for all that. We need to exercise our rights. But at the same time, there's a crowd that is just rebellious. Yep. Yep. They're just rebellious. They won't listen to anybody. They won't listen to the boss. Nobody's going to tell them what to do. Hey, you know, most of those people are without a job. Uh, most of those people are always hunting for something, always in need of something, always, uh, 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 always uh, out of uh, something. Because why? They don't heed instruction. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. We're told here that, hey, the right response is to heed. That means to obey. Obey the reproof, the correction. Look, young people, listen to me. I'm not beating you up. There's times where you could reprove others, I'm sure. <laughs> reprove your parents. Be careful in you doing that. Uh, but, but the point is, is that your parents aren't telling you what to do because they hate you. They're telling you what to do because they care about you. Amen. They know. Hey, listen, the doctor, <laughs> older people, the doctor is not telling us what not to eat because he hates us and wants to deprive us of the good stuff. You know, he's trying to help us to be able to live more healthy, to be more profitable with our, our, our life and be more productive, you see. Oh, I'm under conviction now. I probably want to just go to so. Hey, and then listen, the proper response is also to hasten. That means to be quick. Be quick to repent and amend your ways. Uh, Psalm 119, the psalmist wrote in verse 60, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Get it right right away. Amen. Amend your ways, Jeremiah said. Uh, what, what's the proper response of God's people to a correction? Amend it right away. Get it fixed. Turn around, right? Turn around. Turn it around. Get, get it right. And, oh, you know, they said uh, about uh, old uh, 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 Sam Jones, uh, evangelist of the uh, last century, uh, early part of the last century. Uh, they said to Sam Jones, uh, 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 Jones, you're, you're turning, you're rubbing the cat the wrong way. And, uh, and, and Jones said to a bunch of reporters, he said, uh, turn the cat around. Turn the cat around. I'm not, you know, I ain't changing. Uh, they said to him, uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, the, the press made you, you know, because he got real popular. You know, he was, he, you know, he was a hard preacher. And they said, the, the, uh, the press made you. And he said, all right, well, go make another one. <laughs> you know? And he walked into a prayer meeting, and uh, the, the church that had sponsored him to come was upset with him because he was, I mean, he was shutting down the taverns. He was shutting down the bars, the home, houses of ill repute. He walked into the, uh, 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 the prayer. They were in that prayer room, and, and the deacons and the church that had sponsored were all praying that uh, God would shut him down, you know, like, you know, kill him and everything. 
and uh, he listened to them praying for a little bit. They were, I mean, they were all praying. You know, God, did, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden, he, 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 it seemed as if the prayer would, had died down, and, and he raised his voice and said, "Oh God, I pray you wouldn't hear a one of them. Rebuke every one of them for God's sake." Hey, listen, I'm just simply saying. Sam Jones said, "Hey, turn you turn the cat around, right? You amend your ways. You, you don't listen. Listen, you don't break God's commandments. God's commandments break you. God's word breaks you." You're not going to, listen, you're not going to break the authorities in your life. You're going to smart for not, for not getting in line with them, you see. Hasten. And then, listen, here's some perils, if you would. Some of the perils or the dangers, the perils of rejecting reproof. See, stubbornness, hardening one's heart leads to destruction in our lives, right? Proverbs 29, 1, I've seen this. I've seen this so many times. Miss Arcan, if I started to rattle them off, she could testify with me. I've seen this stubbornness, a hardening of one's heart that led to their destruction. Proverbs 29, 1 says, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. I heard one preacher get up and say, Hey, we've got to stop uh, often reproving people because we're hardening them. That's not what the verse is saying. And what the verse is saying is that, Hey, because they, they're not heeding, they're not heeding, and they keep hardening their neck to it, then they're going to be destroyed. Amen. And listen, it shall suddenly be destroyed, and get this, and that without remedy. You know, you can get, you know, messed up. You might survive, but friend, you can get so messed up, you're, you're useless. You're unusable, if you would. Or you're greatly hindered from being able to be used. Does that make any sense to anybody? Yeah. Let, let me go on quickly. A stubbornness, right? Uh, the, the, here's another one of the uh, perils, if you would. Uh, if you, and I, I was looking for S's, so I said stupidity, okay? I said stupidity, all right? I, I shouldn't use that kind of language. But, but, but can I just say there's an ignorance about this? Failing to learn and grow from, correc from correction. Look what the Bible says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise it. Fools say, I mean, you know what you're talking about. Nah, fooey on that. You know, I ain't got to do that. That's crazy. Hey, hey, listen, man, you better tie that thing down. If you don't tie it down, you know, you, ah, it'll be fine. Get it down the road about five miles, and hey, guess what? Hitch popped off. It's going through the woods, and truck's going this way. Okay, yeah, I'm just saying it, it, it is, it is a, it, it fools despise wisdom. They, they just get dumb. Just get dumb. And this is why a lot of times, man, listen, this is a lot of times young people get a bad rap. It's not, look, they're simple, so they don't know. A lot of times young people don't know what they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. And then when somebody who's lived a little longer and gone down the road a little further tries to, hey, listen, there's some potholes along the way here. you got to be careful if you're going down that road. Nah, don't tell me, man, this car, man, it's fast. And I can, man, I, I got good handling skills. And I'll be able to, friend, a lot of times you can't see. Okay. I try to tell you, you see. And, and, and friend, listen to me. It is so much better. This is where I learned. It is so much better. Hey, they, they say experience, right, is the best teacher, right? To learn from experience. But really, that's not true. What the Bible teaches, is it's better to learn from somebody else's experience. Amen. Why should I have to touch the, uh, the, 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 the top of the stove to learn out that it's hot and burn my hand? My little sister did it. That's good enough for me, bless God. I ain't touching it. Why, hey, I shouldn't have, I don't need to touch it because I know it'll be hard. And my dad told me, don't touch it. That's good enough right there. But you know, it's real bright, cherry red, man. Let's, you know, come on, let's take a look at it. And, ooh, man, that is so pretty. Let's, you know. I mean, it's like somebody pushing in one of them little buttons on the dashboard, you know what I mean? And you push it and it boop, pops out a minute or two later. Push it back in, it pops back out. You know, look at that thing. I remember my dad saying, hey, you better not touch that little Paul. You'll be sorry. Don't touch it. You'll be sorry. You know, he went into the little, you know, Keller's, uh, 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 little Keller store, like a high store or 7-Eleven back in the day. My foot kicked up on that little boom, boom, popped in about a minute, about a minute. So boom, popped out. Dad wasn't in the truck. Uncle wasn't in the truck. So I took a look at it. You know, my uncle had been using it all day. Uh, you can figure that out. And, uh, 
And so, so I pulled it out, and I looked at it. Man, I'd never seen anything so bright. And it had this weird smell to it. This is uh, an odd smell that I'd never really smelled before. You know, this just odd kind of a thing. And so I just had to get a little sniff. <laughs> oh! Let me tell you something. I dropped that thing. And, man, I, I, I mean, I, I, then I picked it up, burnt my fingertips, dropped it again, picked it back up shoved it back into the thing, and, and, and just as my dad and uncle were coming out to the truck, I pushed that thing in. I looked, my uncle got in the truck, and he said, what you do to your face, boy? I had a big old bright round circle. He hollered at my dad, Paul, that boy, look what he do. And, he, and my dad was like, what, what did you do? And all of a sudden, boop, the thing popped out. Did you touch that? I told you you'd be Sorry. And let me tell you something, I was sorry for weeks going to school, third, you know, a little second grader or something, going to school with little r- round circles on my nose. And the point is, is why, why, why did I, it have been a whole lot better just to not touch it? Right. Just not touch it. You know what that was? Stupidity. That's what it was. He said, no, that's just curiosity. No, that was stupid. Right. <laughs> Shove my own nose in a little, you know, electric lighter thing. Hey, listen to me. The perils of rejecting reproof and rebuke. Listen to me. The stubbornness, right? The hardening of one's heart. The stupidity. The failing to learn and grow from correction. The separation. There's an alienation, if you would, from God and His blessings. This is why I entitled it Corrected and Blessed. Corrected and blessed. There's an alienation that comes from it. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear you. I mean, that's, hey, you know what? I don't want to get, hey, I don't want to get in a place where I'm separated from my God. And, and, and can I say this? I don't want to get in a place where I'm separated from my authorities. You understand? Because these things work out. Remember, God's the ultimate supreme authority. Then all other authority is delegated authority from God coming on down the, if you would, the authority chain. And so, hey, that then come, that, that, that same principle comes down here. And, and friend, you start getting to where, hey, you, you, can, you don't want to take the reproof from daddy. Well, guess what? After a while, a kid, they'll become re- rebellious. Re- rebellion will come. You're not going to obey the, uh, uh, you know, the rules. Uh, you know, you're not going to live under our roof not obeying the rules uh, of our roof. And what will happen when you don't heed, when you reject uh, that reproof uh, of the authority, there'll be a separation there. You know, uh, go, go, go to work tomorrow, go to McDonald's, go, go wherever it is someone works tomorrow, and you know, I'm not wearing a uniform. I'm not going to wear the uniform. Well, hey, listen, you, you need to you know, have your shirt tucked in. I've, I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen at a McDonald's before. The manager says, hey, tuck your shirt in. My, I, ain't, I ain't tucking in. Don't be telling me what to do. No, no, tuck your shirt in. That's the policy, tuck your shirt in. I'm not tucking my shirt. You can't tell me what to do. Hey, well, listen, you can punch out then. I mean, this is all going on in front of customers. I'm not saying the manager did a good job. I'm just saying, it, and, and you know what happened? There was a separation that took place. Oh, yeah, he didn't tuck his shirt in, but he had no job either. He was out of there. You know, that's fine, man. You don't tuck your shirt in, that's good. I'm just telling you, that's a rebel lifestyle, and it'll lead to poverty and shame is what that'll lead to. That, that's the danger, that's the danger, the peril of rejecting reproof and rebuke. And then, listen, there's the promises for receiving reproof and rebuke. There's the promise of it. And the promise is, look, wisdom, wisdom. God says when you receive reproof, you'll be wiser. You'll gain wisdom. Gaining wisdom and understanding, Proverbs 9, 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will, yet be, uh, he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. What that means is the people that receive it, they increase. They grow. Look, man, okay, that's good. I appreciate that. I, I, hey, you know what? I can, I can adjust that. I can do this. I, I'm gonna, hey, I'm going to try to do right. Hey, you know what? That, that will make you wiser. That will improve you. You'll become, hey, stronger. You'll become better. You'll become smarter. You'll become richer. Now, this isn't a sermon about money. I, it's just about the idea of your prosperity. The blessings of life will come. The, your well-being. Listen, uh, at, at Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. Huh. You know what? Your well-being. These are the promises. Your wisdom, your well-being by how you handle reproof and rebuke. 
Hey, listen, I don't do it as much. I, I came up in a church, bless God, where, hey, the preacher preached on reproving and rebuking a whole lot. And it was helpful. And, and, and I don't know, maybe, hey, I, I, I don't like to, you know, uh, uh, be uh, all up in uh, people's business and faith. And I know you're going, no, come on, not you, preacher, for real, really? Hey, listen, hey, if, you, if you knew how I could be. But I don't do it all the time, but I am so grateful uh, that I had it. And, and listen, and we ought to be looking, hey, for correction. Why? Because being corrected leads to blessing. Receiving the correction, receiving the reproof, receiving the rebuke, hey, and, 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 uh, and heeding it, hey, it'll lead to greater wisdom. It'll lead to your well-being. Hey, it'll lead, hey, to a good walk with God. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He was talking to that Laodicean church. And he was saying, look, the people that I love, I rebuke. The people that I love, I reprove. Because I want to help you. I want you to get better. I want you to be blessed in a bigger way. I want you to be, you know, healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? That's the old saying. I, I want the best for you, right? That's what the, the Scripture's saying. And, and listen to me, you, you folk, Lyris, uh, Lily, the nursery somewhere, wherever you are. Hey, you young folks, listen to me. The, the accepting of reproof and rebuke will lead to a prosperous life for you. Right. Trust. Trust your God. Trust the authorities in your life. You, you, I'm, I'm just saying to you, I mean, we don't run those buses because we want to, you know, just count a number. We, we don't bring people to church just because, you know, it's fun. Uh, no, no, we want to help you. Uh, uh, Olivia, Asia, we care about you. These folks that pick you up for church and talk to you and try to get on you sometimes and all of that, hey, listen, it's for your good. But can I say this to you? It, hey, listen, we ain't grown out of it yet, Andrew. You still need to be rebuked, right? Randy, that's right. That's why God gave you Joanne. It's her birthday today. Amen. Amen. So you do whatever she says, all right? That's a wise way to live. Uh, my, my point is, is as, as I was thinking of these things in a good success out of Joshua, but pushed off you know, kilter because of the, uh, and it's not bad. It was a good thing. I mean, it, the, the sermon went with the special last week. But then digging deep into my Sunday school lesson, it just, wow, man, this just opened up. Hey, this is what, hey, this is what all of us need. And it would have been a good graduation message. But then I thought, hey, it is, it's a good everybody message. Amen. He said, I don't like that preacher meddling in my life, talking about this, talking about that. I don't like him meddling. Friend, I don't want to meddle. I, hey, talk to Miss Arcan. I got enough to fix in my life, friend. I ain't got time to be fixing all your business. But I'm preaching to all of us, right? Remember, an imperfect man, right? Preaching a perfect book to imperfect people with the purpose of perfecting all of us. Okay? And so it's not about me trying to meddle. It's about, hey, us trying to receive the reproof and the rebukes of life when they come so that, hey, we can receive it, get corrected, hey, and go on and live. And listen to me, we still have instruction for righteousness. We're still being told what to do and instructed and, and working through. And that's just how it goes until Jesus comes. No matter how big you are. And, and listen, and that example in your Sunday school lesson about Apollos, this polished Apollos, hey, uh, uh, the example about that, hey, here's a man who humbled himself. And just let these little trades uh, couple come along and, and say, hey, look, man, have you, let us show you something a little more perfect here. And, and, and all I'm saying to you is, is, hey, listen to this old Bible right here. Amen. Okay? Don't be ashamed of this old King James Bible. Let's say, hey, listen, it's still special. Amen? Amen. It's got power all over it. It's still, listen to me, as, as, as old and all they got to say about it, it's still the most read. Right. It's still the most read. And, and I'm not embarrassed. Amen. Amen. That's what we are. It's who we are. Amen. Just stick with it, okay? And, and listen, and then just take the reproof and rebuke. Hey, be grateful about it. I, I was telling when I was closing out my Sunday school lesson, I was, we, the one ministry I was in, we reveled in, hey, did you get your face ripped off this week? Because if you didn't get your face ripped off this week, it means you weren't in the battle. 
That's what it meant. I mean, we did so much. I mean, listen, back in the day, our division, our bus division, brought in about 2,200 on average every week. Uh, the bus route that I worked on, we averaged it during program about 240 uh, on the program. That Dr. Penns that we uh, talked about who went home to be with the Lord this week, I, uh, our bus would have overflow, and they would put me with Brother Penns. He was bringing in uh, folks from Cambodia and uh, 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 Southeast Asia, and he'd have about maybe 10, 15 people. It's hard to get them to come for our, you know, to church. And, and so they would put all our overflow. I'd get on his bus. Man, I mean, we made mistakes. They told us when we got on that bus, you let Brother Pins run the program because that was his bus, you know. We'd get on there because Brother Pins was a little older. He was a little more uh, academic. and Plus, he was working with the, the, the Asian folks there, so he had different cultures there. Well, we were wanting to jump up and, you know, uh, uh, clap your hands, you know, and screaming and hollering on the bus and stuff like that. And, and I can remember I did that one week, and, and Brother Pins just gently let my division leader know that, you know, we had kind of taken over the bus. It was fine for us to use and fill up the spaces, but he didn't really want us scaring his people. And we were. No, no doubt about it. And, uh, and, and, and let me tell you something. The sermon that night on the bus. Oh, yeah. I, I was it, okay? And uh, some of you bus workers that share the bus with the Oriental ministry, that's what he said. He goes, and, and, and you don't know how to respect the authority that's on that bus. Some of you bus... Well, there was only one. <laughs> Brother Paul. I was the one, all right? And, and the point is, is, hey, but you know what? I remember getting off that bus thinking, man, I'll never do that again. And you know what? Hey, next time I got pushed to go that thing, you know what I did? I sat down. I did whatever Brother Penn's told me to do. I mean, I, we did the songs, you know, rolled away, rolled away. You know, we, I mean, I did it Brother Penn's way. Hey, I was coming under my authority, you see. And all oh, just time after time after time. Listen, revel in the fact. Man, you know, hey, boy, he ripped my head off tonight. That was God needed that, right? You say, well, I don't, I, I don't want that kind of church where we're ripping everybody's face off. But my point is, is when it does come, be thankful. Amen. Oh, man, I needed that. That's good. Amen? Oh, man, Brother Dempsey and I, we've talked before about Brother and Mrs. Ham. They're real nice people, you know, in the early days. They just told you what you needed to do, though, didn't they? They just told you what you needed to do. Just told you how to do it. And, uh, and you know what? And you're thankful for it later. At first, it stings. You know? Stings. I had uh, Richard was up here the other day with his son. And we were talking about some signs and stuff out here. And it made me think. I said, oh, man, you know, my dad, electrician, we do signs. And I told him about old man uh, Wellborn. And I used to blow the glass and, you know, and all that and all those PMI parking signs. And I've been so many transformers, all these different things with signs all the time. And I was telling him how I, I learned how to not put my hands in my boss's pocket. Because when you're on company time and you got your hands in your pocket, they ain't in your pocket, bless God. I was out there cold out in the middle of a parking lot, man, winds whipping through. And I was there, and, you know, they didn't tell me to do anything yet. So I was just there with my hands in my pocket. And old man Wellborn said, hey, boy, get your hands out of my pocket. I'm thinking, hey, old man, my hands ain't in your pockets. He said, hey, when you're working for me, you keep your hands out of my pockets. And, he's, and he was going, hey, go pick that up. There's that wire there. Go that, you know. And uh, he wasn't even running the company anymore, man. But his name was on the side of the truck. And I, you know, and I, I learned. Then I worked with him the whole next summer. Remember that? I, I went down and worked with the uh, old man Wellborn next to him. he taught me so many things. He was sanding a door one day. With, and, and he had me with a water hose. Uh, hose in the door. It was a metal door. And he was sanding it. And it was a, he was used. He's an electrician. Okay, remember that he's the founder of an electrical company, and he's got a, 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 a sander with with I mean like split wires and everything else on it. And he said, "Now, he goes, if I start to get electrocuted, you need to unplug that, okay? And I'll be fine. Just unplug it real fast. I'm shooting a hose on this door, and I'm getting ready to pull the electrical thing, and I'm watching. I'm scared to death." You know, he's doing it. And then he stops. He goes, now you understand, if I start getting electrocuted, I'm not going to be able to tell you. 
You're just going to have to do it. I was now shaking, man. He did that for like another hour and a half. Fortunately, he didn't get electrocuted. And I'm just times up, but you know, just reproving, rebuking, man. It'll make you. It'll make you. It'll make you a great Christian. Father, we thank you for the Bible tonight, God. I pray that you would help. Lord, help me as a pastor to be willing to do the reproving and rebuking and the exhorting and all that I'm supposed to do. But Father, as a Christian, help me to yield to it. And God, help all of us to do that. I wonder if the head's bowed and eyes closed. You're here tonight, and you don't know for sure you're going to heaven. I wonder if you'd say, that's me, Pastor. I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. I don't know for sure that I'm going to heaven. Anybody like that tonight? I wonder if you're here tonight and you say, Preacher, you know, the truth of the matter is, is I don't like being reproved. And it, the truth be told, I kind of resist it. I'm more resistant to it than I ought to be. Well, I see hands going up. And I know I need to yield to it and be better at that. If you're like that tonight, let, let's just use the altar. And listen, there might be a parent. There might be a, a young person that needs to get right over some things. Listen, let's get to the altar tonight. Let's commit ourselves to respond properly and appropriately to the reprove and the rebuke of the Word of God, of the authorities in our lives. Let's do some business with God. Shall we stand as the music plays? Join these others that have come. Corrected and blessed. Corrected and blessed. I'm telling you. If you can learn to respond to it. dismissed. I'm going to ask Brother Arcan to come, if you would, and dismiss us in prayer tonight. You continue to pray for all these folks. You'll be praying for Miss Amy. Pray for Brother Kingsland. He's kind of, this uh, nausea has got him down right now. You pray about that. Pray for Brother Chuck. We'll get the word out. We'll, we'll let you know when we get the word. And uh, Brother uh, uh, Arcan, you pray for us. Appreciate you, Dad. And uh, we'll be dismissed with his prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you for all the blessings you give us, Lord. We ask you to bless us all now as we get ready to go our own ways, Lord, and bring us back at the next appointed time to meet. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.